So today we want to look at uh, mainly the, the life of Joshua, uh, do some sorts of a, um, a, a, a summary of a character study and be encouraged looking at him. What is courage? Do we know what courage is? Look at this picture here. Do you think this is courage? A good definition of courage. <laughs> Where this penguins is going to wake up the sleeping polar bear. <laughs> it's probably not really um, what courage should be like. It's more mainly foolishness, isn't it? <laughs> I hope he knows how to run very fast. And, and, and this, this is an illustration of what courage is not in comparison to the next uh, picture that you will see where we see Nelson Mandela, uh, a quote of him. I learned that courage was not the absence of fear but the triumph over it. The brave man is not he who does not feel afraid but he who conquers that fear. And we want to, to to discuss a bit more what courage is and what it is not and, and find uh, some key in our lives because definitely you and I we need courage if we want to make it to the end if we want to live the life that Jesus Christ intends for us certainly in the last days even in the darkened uh, generation we need to, to be very very courageous so courage is not just a physical bravery uh, and attributes of a character that uh, brings people and, and admiration. And you know from the Bible to Hollywood movies, uh, courage and bravery is so uh, much uh, exalted. Uh, we know uh, David and Goliath, you know, even not many non-Christians will know David and Goliath. It's even uh, become a saying in society. And children are raised on a diet of heroic tales. But uh, courage is not only physical. There are different types of courage, from physical strength, endurance, to mental uh, courage. Like many people have, have had the courage to invent things that have impacted our world in the uh, areas of science and, and many, many progress in, in uh, our society has been made by courageous people. Maybe, maybe many of them were opposing what they were trying to do, the visions that they had, and were telling them, no, it will work, you're losing your time, you, you're not making any money, you will not be successful, but so many inventions came from courageous people. Many people invested everything that they had, all of their money, uh, to, to do that. And we have also moral courage, like Martin Luther King, Nelson Mandela, and many others who spoke out against injustice uh, at great personal risk. Courage is often, uh, next slide, uh, point, okay, courage is often an unknown quality. You know, if I, when I ask you, are you courageous, none of you dare to answer me because uh, we don't know exactly how to evaluate uh, courage. Uh, people, normally, we don't see ourselves as courageous. We, we, we don't know. Uh, you, you don't know that you will be courageous until a crisis will come, an extreme situations will come, and then you will find out if you are courageous or not. Uh, boldness is not courage. Boldness is a personal personality trait. Uh, some people are outgoing. It's just a personality trait. It's not because they are courageous. You may have a, a coward bold person. You know, p people who express freely is not necessarily a sign of boldness. It may be, but not necessarily. Talking loud and expressing freely is not necessarily a mark of courage. A shy person or a quiet person, an humble person, can be courageous. So don't be fooled when people look like they are brave, they might not be. A lack of ignorance or fear of, uh, a lack of, or ignorance of fear are not also a sign of, like, like the penguin over the, the polar bear, are not a sign of, uh, of courage. Fools can jump in dangers, not because they are courageous, but because they are fools. Okay. So courage is not only about physical heroic acts. It is also required for everyone 
to face the challenge of daily life. There's a lot of courageous people in our society, a lot of courageous mothers who raise their children without uh, a husband who have been uh, cheated or abandoned or something like this. There's a lot of uh, poor people who are surviving uh, every day in context of uh, oppressions and injustice and all this. So we have. We, we, we read courage is grace under pressure. Sometimes I wonder, I look at older ladies here in Hong Kong, they are picking up the, the, the trash or they are uh, picking up cardboard box and I wonder what their life has been like. Like they, they are like survivors, they are just like trying to, to go on to the next day, you know, and everything. So I, I, I'm quite impressed about this. Courage is what makes you persevere against adversities. Courage is the empowering, empowering, <coughs> sorry, empowering <coughs> experience of a decision to stand up and withstand distressing outcome, and when wounded or knocked down, pick up again and keep on keeping on. Hallelujah. So we want to look at the uh, character of Joshua as a background. Uh, and find out more about courage because definitely we will find courage with, uh, with Joshua. When do we meet Joshua for the first time in the Bible? Do you know when we meet Joshua for the first time? You know, we learn also about Joshua when you think of Caleb. Because we, we just did a study on Wednesday night Bible study on Caleb, so we know that Caleb was 40 years old about because he says it we were 40 years old when they went to spy the land and then later on the next time you find him he's 80 85 years old he's still fresh and strong and he wants to go and conquer this this hill where the enemies the these giant are and he says trust me i can do it you know and everything so we find courage we find strength and and bravery with with them and all of us, we, in, a, in a way, we want to be successful. How many of you, you have a goal in your life not to be successful? <laughs> okay, that's what I thought. Hallelujah. So what do we remember mostly about Joshua? We remember him certainly with the 12 spies. Moses sent him out. And only Joshua and Caleb came back with a positive report. Okay, and they, 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 they stood their ground to a point where they were threatening to be stoned. The, the, the congregation wanted to kill them, so it's a pretty uh, uh, frightening situation, but they didn't bow down. They really called, we can do it, God is on our side, let's, let's, let's obey God and everything. But because of that, the, every spy died and only them survived and entered into the land. Joshua was also a warrior, a fighter, and we will find it a bit more later. Joshua also, something that is a bit more obscure, was Moses' assistant. And that's something that is important, and we will see it a, a little bit more, because he was very close to Moses, and he was very close to the Lord, also at the same time. When Moses would finish meeting with God, Joshua stayed in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. And Joshua was a very gifted uh, leader. He became a very uh, gifted leader. Uh, maybe he, he had some skills, but certainly God built him up, called him, and developed him just like he can do with each one of us. The first sight we get of Joshua is not spying the land. It is after Moses had struck the rock at Oreb and the children of Israel drank the water. The next thing that happened was uh, uh, Amalek attacked them, attacked Israel, and uh, he was ordered to take the army and fight back against Amalek. That's the first time that you see Joshua in the Bible. It is in a fight. He is, he is commanding the army under Moses' command and he goes, he goes there. You know, the, the people of Israel, they just experienced a divine uh, encounter with God at the rock. They drank the, this water and they saw the miracle of God and they go and fought with that spirit behind them. As we have said, Joshua was a warrior for God. Joshua went out to charge 
uh, uh, took, took charge of the army, and that's when we saw him for the first time. Joshua was always successful. His first battle, he was successful, and his last battle, he was successful. The only little hiccup in his battles was against the city of Ai, and it's not because of him. It's because there was sin in the land, and then uh, in the camp, and God had to deal with this. That's the only, but as in, in terms of leadership, and in terms of his ability to lead the army, he was always successful. What was the secret of his success? We will discover some of it this morning. As I said before, we all want success, and we have a lot to learn from him. Moses went up on the mountain, and while he was praying, and Joshua was down there fighting. And when Moses has his end up, then Israel was winning. And when Moses' hands collapsed because he was tired, then Amalek was winning over. So Ur and uh, Aaron lifted this, uh, and then he took a stone and he, he sat there and for hours and hours had to uh, keep his hand up. Hallelujah. Amen. And then this is how they, they prevail. Then we find uh, him as a Moses assistant. After the, the golden calf, when Israel uh, went into idolatry with the, the daughters of Moab and they committed the sexual sins and immorality and God was very angry. At that time the tabernacle had not yet been, been set. It had been given in the vision according to the pattern uh, of the heavenly uh, model to Moses, but it had not yet been done. At the time, we read in uh, Exodus chapter 33 about a, a tabernacle, but actually it's not the tabernacle, uh, the, you know, that the one that we normally refer to. It's only a tent, because the word tabernacle in the Old Testament is the word tent. And it's, uh, so Moses at pitch his tent outside of the camp. He was very angry, and God was very angry, and the, the people of God had, had, had sinned over there, so he, he sought, uh, he, he, he built his own tent outside, and it was called the tent of meeting. And the people who desired to seek the Lord, they had to go there to find Moses outside the camp and then the tent of meeting. The camp itself had been defiled by the sin of the people. So it is not the, the, the tabernacle of Moses, uh, the, the religious one with the priesthood uh, Levitical. It had not yet been uh, set yet. So we read in Exodus chapter 33 verse 11, So the Lord spoke to Moses face to face as a man speak to his friend, and he would return to the camp. But his servant Joshua, the son of Nun, a young man, did not depart from the Tent. So that is another indication of, of what kind of man he was. And maybe this has become also part of his success uh, development, of his leadership development, to wait upon the Lord, to receive, to stick close to God, to receive strength from the Lord, to receive vision from the Lord, to, to, to let him refresh and strengthen the inner man. Hallelujah. There is only one thing on record against Joshua in, in the old Bible. And it is one time he opposed the idea that Eldad and Medad were prophesying in the camp when they should have been coming to Moses because Moses had called all the leaders. And these two guys were prophesying the camp and Joshua was very enraged, he was very furious. And he, he, he called upon Moses, he stopped them, they should not be. And he was rebuked by, by Moses and Moses told him that all God's people should be prophets. So, so he learned something about his leadership, it was a lesson uh, for him. Then we come to the 12 spies. The next time we hear of him, it is in connections with the 12 spies. He was the only one of two of the 12 that dared to bring a positive report. A minority against a majority. And then we see a, a difference in seeing the, uh, to the, the vision of God or the vision of the world. And this is something, a, a tragedy in churches uh, with Christians, because many Christians have the same vision as the people who have no vision. They have the same vision as no vision, not the vision of God. They see things, they analyze things, they reason things, they plan things, but God is not giving them uh, the visions. And that is the, the, the problem that happened there. The 10 spies saw only the giants. 
they only saw the impossibilities. But Joshua and Caleb, they saw that God is on our side, we can do it. And this is such a different way to, to see, to, to face situations of your own and your life, facing the situation, the, the difficulties for the missionaries, for the family members, for the business people. And we have all of these, these the challenge before uh, all of this. Each one of us, we face many battles that will require faith in the midst of giant. There will always be something that is bigger than you. People that you will feel helpless, situations that you feel hopeless, things, situations in which you feel that you are out of resources. You just don't know how this can change and how, how you can make a difference and, and things like that. I have been there many times and, and feeling helpless and hopeless, out of resources. But God always has taken me uh, through every single situation. And it is often very close to us. It is in our families. It is in our own homes. You see a difference between the ten spies and these two. They saw things differently. They, they see things differently. And this is true. There's many Christians who do not see like God sees. And, and we have to, supposed to have a vision, eh? to, to see, to think, to do, to, to be occupied with the things of God. But uh, Joshua and Caleb had uh, this one. The ten spies saw the giant the fortress, the impossibilities, cannot be done. It's a waste of time. We will die. We can't make it. Do you speak like that sometime? <laughs> I remember one time, and I, I, I think you know the, the stories, but I was in Guangzhou Airport in Pastor Byron from New York. Just challenged me to move to Hong Kong, because I was a pastor in Canada at the time, to move to Hong Kong uh, as a missionary. And uh, I says, are you crazy? <laughs> That's how I answered. Are you crazy? I have four children. I don't have money. I cannot do this. I cannot do that. I, no, I, I can't. I, I'll go back to Canada, and then I, I can bring teams. I can do certain things. Like I was trying to make my plans outside. And then suddenly, the, truly, I'm not making it up, the voice of God came to me. He says, did you hear what you just said? Cannot, 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 cannot. You just confess your faith in me. And then I immediately repent. And I says, God, I'm, yes, yeah, I'm sorry. If it is you who want me to move to Hong Kong, then whatever. <laughs> then, then there's a story part two for another time. Okay, but, but that, that is to tell you that at that time, it, I was just like the 10 spy. That time, I can't, I can't. No, not for me. Maybe somebody else and all kind of things like this. And uh, when you and I, we are faced with many battles in our lives, and we all do have our battles, we require faith to face the complexities of our situations, the impossibilities of our situations. You see, just like Joshua, we have the ability by the power of the Holy Spirit to envision our situation with God on our side. If God is for us, Everything can be done. All what is impossible to man is possible for God, you know? Like this man who wanted his son to be healed and says, help my unbelief. Like even though my belief is not yet, you know, so strong, but at least I'm willing to believe. I want to believe. Help me to believe more so that I will, I will receive you, your blessing. Having a living faith in God is vital for your spiritual success and your spiritual journey. Without that, you will fail, you will be discouraged, you will discourage other people, you will criticize, and, and all of this. Remember something. These Joshua and Caleb live a very difficult injustice in their life. Because they wanted to fight, and they, they were right, and the majority in the populations were wrong. Is that right? So they were right, people were wrong, but the majority won, and they had to share the same faith with the unbelievers. To me, this is very difficult to accept. And maybe for you, you would be very upset if you would have been Caleb or Joshua 
Why do I have to go for 40 years in the wilderness and to bear the same punishment as the others? I, I was not like them. I, I wanted to obey. I wanted the victory, but now I'm here. And bitterness and grumbling and all of these negative uh, emotions and attitudes could have developed, right? But in 40 years, there is not a single mention of either Caleb or Joshua who complain against God. Not one time. I think we are very good in complaining. Yes? yes? yes. Uh, we can win the first prize when it comes to that. And some of us are better than others. Yes. But this is not what we see here. When you find a man and a woman of God, who is successful in God's service, seldom you will find complaining. It should walk together. You find success in God, you find strength in God, you find someone going on for God, you will not hear a lot of complaining. They don't have time, you know. Hallelujah. And when a man or a woman of God will fall before the Lord in, in, in humility and you want to serve God, you can serve the Lord even when things turn bad. It didn't work your ways. People have made the wrong decisions and it's affecting your ways. But you still can be a light. You still can serve the Lord. You still can be faithful. You still can uh, do the things that God wants you to do in this, in this context. You understand that? It doesn't matter if the circumstances have turned negative against, against you. Hallelujah. Now Moses is about uh, to, to leave. Uh, and he will not enter the land. He was told that he would see the land, but would not enter the land. And just before departing, Moses is commanded by God to address uh, and give instructions to Joshua and to charge him to be the, the leader uh, that will continue. And we find it in the next slide, Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 38. You will see these slides right now. Joshua, the son of Nun, who stands before you, he shall enter. Encourage him, for he shall cause Israel to inherit it. 328, but charge Joshua and encourage and strengthen him. For he shall go over at the head of this people, and he shall put them in possession of the land that you shall see. So this is a commandment from God toward uh, uh, Joshua. Encourage him. Build him up, encourage him, and strengthen him. And this is what, and the uh, CEV version says, so help him to be strong and brave and tell him what he must do. Help him to be strong and brave. So Moses was an instrument of God to build up the leadership, the confidence, and to, to, to transfer or to, to give something that uh, Joshua needed. Uh, verse, uh, chapter 1, verse 38, the Good News Bible says, but strengthen the determination of your helper. Strengthen his determination. He needs to, to know that this is, this is coming uh, from God. What will help him to be strong to fulfill his calling? Now we turn to the next uh, slide, uh, Deuteronomy 31. Then Moses summoned Joshua and said to him in the sight of Israel, Be strong and courageous, for you shall go with these people into the land that the Lord has sworn to their fathers to give them, and you shall put them in possession of it. It is the Lord who goes before you. He will be with you. He will not leave you nor forsake you. Do not fear or be dismayed. As we have uh, read before, Joshua is already a warrior. He was already in charge of commanding the, the, the campaign, the military campaign. But now he received a greater charge. Before he was under the leadership, the supreme leader of Moses. Moses heard from God. But now he has to step into that role. And it is too big. Who can step in so, so big shoes if we, and, and do this a total leadership? What's the encouragement that he received over here? I will be with you. He will be with you, the Lord. He will not leave you. He will be with you. So don't be afraid. Okay. So that is great. 
31:23, and the Lord commissioned Joshua. So before it says Moses charged him, now it says the Lord commissioned. So it is really the Lord's will. Joshua, the son of Nun, and says, "Be strong and courageous, for you shall bring the people of Israel into the land that I swore to give him. I will be with you." So you and I. In a way, it's very clear, and Jesus made it clear in John chapter 15. I have chosen you, and I have sent you. And we should have a similar confidence, and we need to have similar promises to, to, to understand our identity, who we are, to be able to fulfill our task and to be aware of the, of the uh, ministry or the calling that God has for each children of God. We have to be believers. We have to be courageous. We have to be proactive. We have to be able to understand the will of God to stand and to do the things that Christians do because we have been chosen by the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Then we find Joshua. Moses is dead in Joshua chapter 1 verse 1 to 5 after the death of Moses the servant of the Lord the Lord said to Joshua now the Lord speaks directly before he spoke to Moses tell Moses to tell Joshua now it's Mo God speaks to Joshua directly and and it's the same in our lives we we grow we develop we come by experience to uh, understand the Lord and to walk in the Lord. We need instructions. We need guidance. We need to follow others. We need to imitate other Christians. But we need to be able to hear from the Lord also. We need to be able to, to decide and to hear the, God, the, the, the call of God in our life. Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise. There was a leadership. He is dead. He is not there anymore. Now, I'm turning to you. And you are the one that I am choosing to, to do this. Every place that the sole of your foot will tread, I give it to you as I have promised to Moses. This is the military campaign. They are going to occupy the land. They are going to fight the giant that 40 years before, they says, we can't, they're too big, their cities are too strong, these people are giant, we are like grasshoppers. Now he says, just as I promised Moses, I will be with you. And verse 5 is a wonderful uh, promise. No man, think about it, if you are Joshua, you are going to fight people, giant. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. He's in his 80s. He's a warrior. He's the leader of the people. Just as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you or forsake you. It needed a big dose of courage to, to step into this, this role that he needed. And many times there will be situations in our lives where you and I, you will need a big step of courage to overcome, to, to make it to the next step. To, to, through this situation, you will need to have a big, 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 big faith. Joshua 1, 6 to 9. Be strong and courageous because you will lead these people to inherit the land. So he's going to not only conquer and fight, but he's going to occupy the land, distribute the land, allot the lands to all the tribes after that. This is a very, very big mission that will last for years. Verse 7, be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left that you may be successful wherever you go. Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Joshua must be strong. Must be and must be there's something more. You know, we only remember these two. We only remember be strong, be courageous. But there's another one. Be careful. And this is the key. In order to be strong and to be uh, courageous, you need to, to build that foundation 
by being be very careful to obey or to believe to do according to and this is something that must be a lesson learned from all of us if we want to be successful in a lifetime in our Christian life to fulfill God's intentions purposes or ministries and our relationships with our children with our jobs with everything we need to be careful careful to obey Careful to uh, put something. Let, let me let me go with you uh, uh, with the words. Be strong and be courageous. The word for courageous actually should be the first. It should be inverted. It should be be courageous and be strong. Because the word the first that it comes in line is the word chasak. Be of good courage. Hold fast. Play the man or be a man. Become mighty, prevail, recover. You see, if there is a defeat, there is a time of weakness, a tragedy, a crisis, recover. Come back, be courageous, recover. In that sense, it would be a recovery. Stand up again. Be brave, resolute, determine. Behave heroically, withstand. Then another interesting word is restrain. You know, sometimes, it's not to say everything that is on our mind. It's not to, to insult someone and to be violent. Sometimes self-control, humility, shutting our mouth in certain activities are better courage than other things. It would be easier and more natural to shout our anger than to just have self-control and restrain and shut our mouth and accept a pain and an injustice instead of shouting you know and fighting immediately so to be courageous has many manifestations of it like we saw the penguin and the the bear okay so th this foolishness and to be courageous i was thinking about that and i did not mention it in the first service but it came you need to have wisdom you, it, the wisdom of god needs to be an element necessary and being a, a courageous person, otherwise it may be a foolishness, a foolish decisions, uh, something that is not very taught about it. So be courageous means all of these things. Be constant, continue. Now the second word, be strong, is a disposition of the mind. It, it talks about your mind. Your mind must be steadfast, established, fortified, strong, and obstinate, and ardent. Okay, now th think with me, let's just put that together. If I am going to be able to do an act of courage, to stand for something, to recover, to, to walk in humility, to restrain, or to rise up to a challenge courageously, I need to have my mind prepared, is that right? It starts with the mind and the heart. So what will make my mind to be obstinate, to be hardened, to be fortified, to be established? What will it be that will prepare my mind to become a courageous? You don't become courageous when you don't step into a dangerous situation or a dangerous uh, situation that could harm you or cause you to lose something if your mind is not prepared. So what is it that will prepare your mind to be courageous? I think the, the last part of the verse says, be careful how you meditate. Be careful to study. Be careful to bring inside your mind all these elements of God, these promises of God, these certainties of God. Prepare your mind to know God, to walk with God, discover God, experience God, so that when your mind will be strong, then when suddenly something will come your way and you will have to, without thinking, be courageous, do an act of courage, then your mind is already strong. Your mind is already obstinate. It's already ardent and it's already in a state of readiness because it's been trained, it's been filled, it's been, uh, you know? You know what I mean? Yes. You know, the word martyr is a very interesting word in the New Testament. Marturia or marturion. It's a martyr. What is a martyr? A martyr is a witness. 
But we think martyr is someone who has his throat slit, you know, and dies. Which is, yes, it's part of it and it might be this. But basically, before that, a martyr is not someone that necessarily die. A martyr is a witness. That's all it is. But it is a witness describing exactly what we're saying. Someone whose mind is obstinate when it comes to Jesus Christ, who knows who he believes, and he fully trusts the Lord Jesus, so that whatever will come against my testimony, my standing, my confession of faith, I'm not moving. I won't go back. I won't shrink. It's obstinate. It's ardent. It's strong in here. And if it's going to cost prison, it's fine with me. It's, if I'm going to lose my possession, it's fine with me. I'm not changing. I'm not shrinking. And if you're going to slit my throat, then slit my throat. And that is the ultimate martyrdom. But before the ultimate martyrdom, this is the mind. The martyr is in his mind sure. Sure of being sure. Assured, strong, and everything. And this is what, what Joshua is, is showing to us. The secret of success. The secret of success is be careful in how you read, meditate, receive the word, put it in your heart, and, and live with it. And when you turn to the left, and when you turn to the right, the word of God is there. That you, verse 7, that you may be successful wherever you go. So Joshua had to conquer the land. And if you look in the book of Joshua, all the military campaign, he went to the north first and all the kings came. Five kings came against him. And then he went to the south and more kings came against him. But it was victory over victory. So whether you may be successful wherever you go. You go to the north, you're successful. You go to the south, you're successful. You, every step of, of your life you will be successful. So what is this word successful? And it's a very interesting word. It's uh, successful in the sense of, you, of being cir circumspect, wise wisely understand something that make you to act as an expert something that makes you to act skillfully something that gives you prudence and wise understanding that's the word so when God says that you may be successful we think success or success oh money good job you know big car you know material possession that that's that's success that's the word success today but the word success is not that it's more it's the wisdom it's it's how you analyze life and people and purpose and goals and and priorities and thinking strategies skills you are developing you are growing you are becoming better and what you do you becoming a better mother you're becoming a better husband you're becoming a better pastor you're becoming a better human being you a wiser person that's that's success you are growing to the likeness of Jesus Christ. You are being transformed. And your life experience increase. And the, the resources, your tools to negotiate with the crisis of life and the decisions you will make, you have more wisdom. You, you are brighter. You, you think more God's way. That's the word success here. How many of you want to have that kind of success? I want that kind of success. Hey, hallelujah. And the other word it says in the verse 8, be careful to do everything written in it. Again, be careful. And then you will be prosperous and successful. Here the word prosperous is also uh, here. Making progress, be profitable, bring to successful issue. You will achieve the goal successfully you will go further if you are a husband you will have you will be able to create an atmosphere of a good relationship in your home if you are a, a mother or a father you will be able to be successful to bring it to to the to the end successfully so it's much more than money in your pocket it's life lessons for every situation in your life and assurance that you are going to make it achieve it have the skill the expertise 
the ability to complete what God is asking us to be, to do, to, to reflect, to, to any mission, small, big, in the church, outside the church. It's the wisdom of God and, and with legs, you know, a walking wisdom that we come. And this is what success and prosperity I here is in, in Joshua. And that's why we need to learn so many things from, from Joshua over here. The Lord was not only calling him, but he was enabling him. And this is what he is going to do with you. Amen? Amen. Now, if, we, if you and I are going to be Christian, make it a good life. Make it the best Christian life that you can. Make it a life, you know, that is successful, that you content, that you achieve something uh, that is wonderful. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. I'm stopping here because I said what I wanted to say and I just wish that God will build you up and we will all become strong here so that when the need is to be courageous, yes, I will be able to. And by continual acts of courage throughout our life and our, the challenges of our life, we will achieve. We will have skills, we will grow, we will develop, and God will be glorified. And the mission that he has for you is calling. Anything that comes your way, you will be strong, you will be bold for God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Let us stand uh, together. Hallelujah.